Uh, this is Seymour Rocks reporting from Down Under. Well, <laughs> once again, I have to adjust my views on things in the light of evidence and uh, present day developments. Over the last four years, I've been concerned with the whole Russiagate hoax, as well as with the wars being waged by the United States neocons, as well as various att attempted or actual regime change operations, false flags and the like. So all of this is true. And uh, many of the people that I have been following on this could be called the um, anti-imperialist movement. They tend to be rather pro-Chinese. And at the time, I just went along with this narrative. Uh, it's more about Russia than I am about China. I'm quite aware of, of China. However, recent events, the whole corona thing, coronavirus thing, where I think it is fairly clear that this was a bioweapon that was either accidentally or it is possible on purpose, uh, as we'll see as we go on. But especially recent developments around Hunter Biden's laptop, which has on it compromising material that either the Chinese are aware of or probably more likely were involved in compromising him and making him subject to blackmail um, so that they could have the uh, the Democrat Party in their in their hands. I've just heard the uh, a comment from the Duran saying, if you have certain proclivities, don't go to Ukraine because it'll be a disaster. Well, that's probably true of China as well. All of this has brought certain people out of the closet. If that's where they were, perhaps I just didn't notice. People who have the finest anti-imperialist credentials and who I have looked up to. Um, so take this, for example. Hear what George Galloway has to say about China and the Falun Gong. Then there was a period where the Falun Gong were the uh, principal uh, section of the orchestra that could be heard, even though... If they ever took hold in Britain, they would be promptly banned as uh, an organization, a cult, much more cult-like uh, than the Scientologists, much more pernicious uh, than them. They were apparently being repressed in China. A cult, a black magic cult, was actually used and bolstered, promoted by Western financed propaganda campaigns. The absolute falsehood, series of falsehoods about China's uh, treatment of the Christian churches inside China. So, according to George, the Falun Gong are a sect. And I suppose being a sect is ample justification for sending practitioners to the prison camps and harvesting their organs. To me, that's a bit like saying that Julian Assange broke the law and so deserves what's coming next to him. Uh, so need I mention double standards? I'm quite used to hearing about the evil Dalai Lama um, from these same leftists. Apparently the Maoist hordes brought civilization to the poor, undertrodden Tibetans. But nobody's ever asked them. The Chinese invaded and the rest is history. So we also have John Pilger, who is another person I've placed on the pedestal, uh, painting China as a victim of a rapacious imperial power, the United States. So I know about the rapacious imperial power bet, but is China really a victim? His predecessor, Barack Obama, who's much admired by many, was the one who put whistleblowers away, uh, was the one who started seven wars 
was the one who, uh, who, who ordered the murder of people by drone. These are all in our so-called backyard. Uh, but the, it's become almost a fetish. There are the two bad guys in the world. There's China. China wasn't a bad guy until a few years ago, actually. It was most people's view of it was benign. Now it's a bad guy. Russia has always been a bad guy. What is so dangerous about this? This misinformation, the fact that China is reported without people understanding this country is ringed by 400 US bases on its doorstep. Uh, and that China is almost certainly going into a form of a state of siege. I've seen this happen in other countries. That means it will defend itself, and it will defend itself with the most lethal weapons that it can fire. For what is the cause of them? China has, in my, as far as I can see, uh, for all its faults, and there are many, of course, China wants to get on making business and making things in the world. Uh, what's going on here, of course, is that China once again, and this has happened before in history, China once again is challenging the very notion of Western and white superiority. Uh, and that is unacceptable. I'm a long time admirer of Pilcher and his journalistic work. And his film, The War on China, is largely correct. However, if we're to be anti-imperialist, shouldn't we be consistent and talk about imperialism everywhere? So once again, I find myself in a battle against binary thinking. The left is thinking that says one side is evil, therefore the other is good. The enemy of my f enemy is my friend. I think it goes. But thinking about all of this, I don't think I'm going to be for the removal of one imperialist power only uh, to see it replaced by another. Similarly, I'm not going to embrace the anti-Chinese zealots and, uh, and therefore the United States. Anyway, reality trumps. The reality is the United States is turning in on itself um, with quite a lot of help, I think, from the Chinese Communist Party. And quite possibly it's on the verge of a civil war, whether that's soft or hot. And it's not sufficiently united to take on anyone very much. It looks as if China has... Uh, trounced the United States, first with a bioweapon and now with quite possibly com compromising the Bidens with the very material that is being released. Do our bidding or else. Uh, which, in my mind, makes it imperative that we look at China. The important 本来是他们给司法部的就是因为拜登嘛
，就是你不管用什么手段都要赢这个大选，否则的话啊，第第二就是赢了以后，你还得听中共的，那就是习王在做一个很大的局，这个局很大啊，这个真的就是啊，远超过咱们的想象，这个局。真的是要，不仅仅是要把，是要把十四亿人啊，把联合国真的是要把美国彻底，美国的总统啊，未来的哪个总统，未来多少年以后的多少任总统都是他们的，都是他们说了算。为什么？实际上就是想拿这个东西啊，拿这个东西，其实。就是两边要挟啊！江泽民为什么要把这个硬盘啊弄出来？说白了，就是啊，这个自保，并且就告诉美国和中共勾兑的人，你看，希望都有你们手上的黑材料。So China has until recently presented. Itself as the perfect global citizen, their business is doing business. We hear, or is it?、Uh, during the early days of coronavirus in Wuhan, I became familiar with what purports to be a secret speech by General Chu Kao Tian back in two thousand and five. I think. I've done a check on the internet, and、um, Chu Hao Tian is a real person. And I can see no reason to suspect that this text is not real. I can find no articles、uh, by the fact checkers on the web claiming it is false. It seems, therefore, as best as I can find out, to have been leaked to the Epoch Times. And has been reposted many times.、Uh, so I am going to assume that it is one percent, one hundred percent genuine. I found a Western biography of Comrade Chu, and found he was being talked about in the following terms: Westerners who have interacted with General Chu. Report that he has a good sense of humour, handles people well, and is well briefed. More than one source reports that he is more intelligent, cosmopolitan, and approachable than other senior PLA officers, such as Jiang Wanyan. Yet Chu is the dedicated party cater, and espouses intense loyalty to the CCP and its ideals. He reportedly enjoys shooting, horseback riding, swimming, and calligraphy.、Uh, his wife, Jiang Qingping, is retired from a career as a doctor at the Navy General Hospital in、um, in、uh, Beijing. So let's just have a look at what uh, uh, Comrade Chu Chi says behind closed doors.、Uh, In 2005, at a time、uh, when we had just、uh, when we had excellent、uh, relations with China, and just f- two, three, four years after China was brought into the World Trade Organization by signalling that it was a good global citizen. So let's just I've just selected a few、uh, extracts here.、Um, So he starts off by、uh, making parallels with、uh, Nazi Germany, and、um, they're somewhat、uh, surprising. So he says Hitler's Germany had once bragged that the German race was the most superior race on earth, but the fact is our nation is far superior to the Germans. So the fundamental reason for the defeats of Germany and Japan is that history did not arrange them to be the lords of the earth, for they are. After all, not the most superior race. Ostensibly, 
in comparison, today's China is alarmingly similar to Germany back then. Both of them regard themselves as the most superior races. Both of them have a history of being exploited by foreign powers and are therefore vindictive. Both of them have the tradition of worshipping their own authorities. Both of them feel that they have serious, the insufficient living space. Both of them raise high the two banners of nationalism and socialism and label themselves as national socialism. Both of them worship one state, one party, one leader, and one doctrine. So there you have it from the horse's mouth. So he goes on, uh, the three lessons are firmly grasp the country's living space, or as the Nazi Lebensraum, uh, firmly grasp the party's control over the nation, and firmly grasp the general direction because, towards becoming the Lord of the Earth. Our resources are in very short supply. The environment is severely polluted, especially that of soil, water, and air. Not only our ability to sustain and develop our race, but even its survival is gravely threatened to a greater much, to a degree much greater than faced by Germany back then. Anyone who's been to Western countries know that their Western, their living space is much better than ours. They have forests alongside their highways while we hardly have any trees by our streets. Their sky is often blue with white clouds while our sky is covered by a, a layer of dark haze. Their tap water is clean enough for drinking while even our groundwater is so polluted that it can't be drank without filtering. They have few people in the streets and two or three people can occupy a small residential building. In contrast, our streets are always crawling with people and several people have to share on room. And then uh, he goes on to say, but the term living space, Lebensraum, is too closely related to Nazi Germany. The reason we don't want to discuss this too openly is to avoid the West's association with us, with Nazi Germany, which could in turn reinforce the view that China is a threat. Therefore, in our emphasis on He Xin's new theory, human rights are just living rights. We only talk about living, but not space, so as to avoid the term living space. So, and this is his, um, his conclusion, we must lead the Chinese people outside of China so that they could develop outside of China. Comrade Mao Zedong said, if we could lead the Chinese people outside of China, resolving the lack of living space in China, the Chinese people will support us. At the same time, we don't have to worry about the labels of totalitarianism or dictatorship. Whether we can forever represent the Chinese people depends on whether we can succeed in leading the Chinese people out of China. Our economic development is all about preparing for the needs of war. I repeat that. Our economic development is all about preparing for the needs of war. If the Chinese people are strapped to the present land, a total societal collapse is bound to take place. So once more, our economic development is all about preparing for the needs of war. Publicly, we still emphasize economic development as our center, but in reality, economic development has war as its center. Therefore, we will not hesitate to fight a third world war so as to lead the people to go out and ensure the party's leadership position. In any case, we, the CCP, will never step down from the stage of history. We'd rather have the whole world, or even the entire globe, share life and death with us than step down from the stage of history. And then he gets on to uh, weaponry. Uh, 
Conventional weapons such as fighters, cannons, missiles, and battleships won't do. Neither will highly destructive weapons such as nuclear weapons. We are not as foolish as to want to perish together with America by using nuclear weapons, despite the fact that we have been exclaiming that we will have the Taiwan issue resolved at whatever cost. Only by using non-destructive weapons that can kill many people will we be able to reserve America for ourselves. From a humanitarian perspective, we should issue a warning to the American people and persuade them to leave America and to leave the land that they have lived in to the Chinese people. Or at least they should leave half the United States to be China's colony because America was first discovered by the Chinese. There has been a rapid development of modern biological technology and new bioweapons have been invented one after the other. Of course, we have not been idle. In the past years, we have seized the opportunity to master weapons of this kind. We are capable of achieving our purpose of cleaning up America all of a sudden. Biological weapons are unprecedented in their ruthlessness, but if the Americans do not die, then the Chinese have to die. If the Chinese people are strapped to the present land, a total societal collapse is about to take place. According to the computation of the author of Yellow Peril, more than half of the Chinese will die, and that figure would be more than 800 million people. This yellow land has reached the limit of its capacity. One day, who knows how soon it will come, the great collapse will occur any time and more than half the population will have to go. We must prepare ourselves for two scenarios. If our biological weapons succeed in the surprise attack, the Chinese people will be able to keep their losses at a minimum in the fight against the United States. If, however, the attack fails and triggers a nuclear retaliation from the United States, China would perhaps suffer a catastrophe in which more than half its population would perish. That is why we need to be ready with air defense systems for our big and medium-sized cities. And then uh, he goes on. Therefore, in recent years, we've been conducting research on genetic weapons, i.e. those weapons that do not kill yellow people. But producing a result with this kind of research is extremely difficult. It is indeed brutal to kill one or 200 million Americans, but that is the only path that will secure a Chinese century in which the CCP leads the world. We, as revolutionary humanitarians, do not want deaths. But if history confronts us with a choice between the deaths of Chinese and those of Americans, we'd have to pick the latter. As for us, it is more important to safeguard the lives of the Chinese people and the life of our party. The last pro problem I want to talk about is a firmly seizing the preparations for military battle. The Central Committee believes as long as we resolve the United States problem at one blow, our domestic problems will all be readily solved. Our military battle preparation appears to aim at Taiwan, but in fact is aimed at the United States and the preparation is far beyond the scape of attacking aircraft carriers or satellites. And then he, compare, uh, he concludes, final statement, Marxism pointed out that violence is the midwife for the birth of China's century. As war approaches, I'm full of hope for our next generation. So there we have it. 
I think on balance, I have to say that I take issue with Mr. Galloway and Mr. Pilger and say that the leadership of the China's Chinese Communist Party and the uh, People's Liberation Army are or have been presenting one image. Our business is doing business when in fact they mean something completely different. And um, in some respects, um, these people are acting as President Xi's useful idiots. The tactics of the Chinese Communist Party is all about preparing for war and winning living space for the Chinese as they have, by their own admission, admission fouled their own nest. This, at a time 15 years ago, um, when China and the West had excellent relations. I shall post the links to the articles I have referenced in the description box below. This is Seymour Rocks reporting from Down Under.